Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, it's been a little while since we've been on here, um, because I was, basically because I was getting world upload all sorted, and a lot of building done on, um, on Celestial Journey, and getting that all sorted, and then, uh, then last week I was getting back into the groove on here, right, and back into what we were working on, um, and I did a bit of building on here, you may notice a lot of dwarven style stuff and got a lot of things cleaned up um, so that when we walk in here it looks a little bit nicer than it did um, this side not that side um, but over here I've basically expanded um, and this is what took a bit of time I expanded on what we had so we still got the base the same basic system so potatoes get pumped into macerators uh, these do have level 3 transformers on them Pretty much all the machines have level 3 transformers. And then it goes up into canners uh, that are being fed by a sink on each side um, with water. And if we come around, you can kind of see the cabling back in here. Uh, so right there. Um, and then there is our ender chest, which we are going to be getting rid of today. Um, but then that stuff gets pumped out from the canner, uh, making that fluid for us. And it gets pumped over... Um, you can see the, this is the fluid conduit that pumps that out, and it sends it over into tanks right in here. Um, and then this is pumping down netherite over here, which right now it's not automatically supplied, it's just being manually fed, but we're going to be working on getting that automated so that it keeps working uh, and creating our lava for us, um, which that lava is being sent down um, to heat our fermenters. And our fermenters are creating um, the biogas from the biomass. And then that's getting pumped over into tanks right here. There's no backup on this, of course, because it's being used by semi-fluid generators. And this is a little bit overkill on the semi-fluid generators, but whenever this all starts to back up, the fluids back up, and then we have a lot more power generation by having 32 semi-fluid generators than if we only had, say, 16. Um, and these pump down into MFSUs, which then cycle the power around to the machines um, over here. And then I do have, um, over here I have our starting machines, our extractor, compressor, electric furnace, and metal former, um, each with level three, or three transformers. So, um, and that's what I've got so far, and you can see the cabling down below. And of course there are steam, or magmatic dynamos back in here that use the Pajo lava. Um, that's kind of the byproduct from our um, liquid heat exchangers. So they create power that powers the uh, the squeezers. So, um, but yeah, that's what I've got so far. I may end up having the squeezers and the Pajo lava being able to pump power into the rest of the system, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Um, but anyways, this creates a decent amount of a buffer for us. It wasn't too expensive. Um, it just took a little bit, a lot of micro-grafting stuff uh, to do. So that's what we've got in place right now, and I have prepped a few things that we're going to be using today uh, for us. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and upgrade our current potato farming um, situation. Because right now we're really not producing a lot of potatoes because it's only byproducts from a farm that's not really running 24-7 because of power issues. So what we're going to do, um, what we're going to start off with today, is we're going to go ahead and set up a harvester system. We're going to come down like three blocks here. And we're going to put in a harvester system that sits here. And then let me go ahead... Ah, this cannot connect into the harvester. That's fine. It's not a big deal for us. Let's see. Let's make some kind of a, a battery system. Maybe a capacitor would honestly work. And originally I was planning on putting the potato farm over in the agriculture area because it would make a lot of sense, but we just don't have the infrastructure really to easily move the power that we need over to that. It's going to be easier to set it up this way. It's not really ideal, but we can always move it later. Um, 
that's the hardest thing about starting with you know kind of large bases where uh, you have all this stuff really spaced out like we have it at the moment so um, I mean I guess realistically we could just do like a like an MV capacitor for this or even an LV capacitor instead of going all the way up to capacitor banks there's really no benefit because we're not going to be pumping a lot of power through that and this will be a room that we can actually go down into and enter um, here soon so but we'll try this we're going to set this to output well, actually just making an electrical engine from forestry would do the trick so we'll just go that route uh, there's also the open computers power converter which would work but I think the electrical engine should be fine. It should keep the standard um, conversion rate, I believe, which is 2.5 to 1. Okay, so there's our electrical engine. And this should do the trick for us. So what we'll do is we'll put down our glass fiber here and our electrical engine there and then we'll make a circuit board for this before too long but let's go ahead and we'll put our lever there it's going to start making power and pumping it into our LV capacitor awesome and then what we can do is put in our harvester here and let's say requires redstone for right now um, preview hidden we're going to set this to area so that's the area that's going to harvest each harvest and it's going to pick up everything in that area and then what we can do is go ahead and just place this out. I'm using fertile soil, of course, um, which is pretty much our staple soil type on here for all of our farms. And then we'll just uh, we'll just bring this back like so. Okay. So now I'm going to want some form of lighting. Um, Not sure at the moment what I'm going to build the walls out of here. So I'm just going to put torches in the field uh, for the time being. Um, because we're only using up like six of our plots to do this. And then uh, let me go ahead and pull off this ender chest. We don't really need this one anymore, I don't think. Because once this is all set up, our harvester will be fine. That power is not correct, but that's okay. Alright, let's go ahead and pop back over. There might be some potatoes in this building. There is. There's plenty of potatoes here. Looks like hemp is where it's suffering here, so... Go ahead and just grab that. But basically, once we have a lot of potatoes going through this, um, we're going to be sitting pretty good on... looks like the harvester is using power even when it's not running. That's crazy. But it still looks like we're coming out kind of positive on power generation at the moment, so that's okay. Go ahead and just run our potatoes out. Okay, I'm going to need some more potatoes. Another stack should do it, though. I mean, I could route potatoes from here over. Um, it wouldn't be enough to handle all of this, but I may still route some over. We'll see how this farm does. I mean, 15 by 15 potato farm is going to create a lot of potatoes for sure. But, uh, but I want to see how things go at the moment. Right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to just pull out the potatoes from this. There we go. That's going to get the macerators running for us. Let's see. I guess since this isn't... Uh, we're going to set this to always on. Since it seems to be using power regardless. No, that actually drains more power. Like a whole lot more power. Wow. We need to get a circuit board for this. Because it's only making 20 RF per tick. The 
Harvester uses, I'm not sure, but definitely uses more than what we are creating from one electrical engine. Let's see, what does it take to make a sequencer? Not bad. Yeah, I tell you what we're gonna do, because this thing uses so much power when it's active and it really doesn't need to be active all that often, truth be told. Um, I do wanna look and see what would it take for us to make. Um, I'd really like to get the lamp of growth up and going. That would be nice. Or get uh, growth lenses and stuff for astral sorcery, like the growth ritual would work out pretty well. Or blood magic, we could do that. Um, but yeah, I think what we're gonna do. Let me get. Uh, let me pop over. Okay, I think instead of having this just run all the time, it's gonna run on a timer system instead. Um, oh wait, I need to make. Uh, need to make my plates real quick. But realistically, this just eats way too much power um, when it's running just nonstop. So we're going to use a sequencer and a timer combination to control this. So it does take it a minute. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our sequencer setting here. And we're going to go ahead and say when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once. No, I want to set it to uh, restart if a new pulse arrives. And we're going to go ahead and invert all the values on here and then we'll have our timer setting here and we're gonna set this to at least a minute um, maybe two minutes for right now until our growth is faster so let's do two minutes um, on the timer and then we're gonna run out our conduit like that just around there and extract is always active okay so it's basically gonna take two minutes to run through this timer so let me break these down so that we can bone mill a few of these crops and I'm also gonna tell this to round robin enabled so that it'll kind of mix them up going in there we've got about 30 seconds left on this and I want to kind of time this to see what the sequencer does and how long this takes to run roughly Because I think with the current setting, um, it's going to take, it's going to be way more than what we need. Because it's going to basically set it for, well, it's only going to be like 64 ticks. So it's actually not too long, I don't think. But we want it to at least go a full cycle through. So that's going to activate... Yeah, it needs to be a bit longer than that. So we're going to say the sequence length, or the delay is uh, five. That's going to basically do five times as long when it comes around. So let's do, um, I'll set this back to 24. There we go. Picked up 51 potatoes. It should come to almost another cycle. Or run one more cycle. This might be a bit much. A bit delay. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and set this to the delay is, say, three. Right now, it's right there. Let's be on that. Go back we want it to at least get to this point maybe a little bit over not necessarily a bad thing yeah I'd say that's more reasonable um, it might end up running two cycles but if it does that's okay it's still a whole lot less power consumption than if that thing ran 24 7 because that's just too much um, now one thing I want to do is I am gonna need to make a weirding gadget because as it currently stands, this building is not running 24-7, and I need it to be running 24-7. Um, but I think with this current setup, I mean, granted, we're going to be going to uh, nuclear reactors before too terribly long. But I think this setup is going to put us really, really good on power until we start into those. Um, now, let me see. If 
from here. That's a chunk over here, which does go to the edge of the building. Yeah, this will be good. So we'll just put it about center. Um, it doesn't really matter in truth, as long as it's within this chunk. So let's just put it right here, actually. So that's going to load out. Oops, wrong button. There we go. That's going to load out this area for us. I'm really thinking about setting this to like three minutes, to be honest. Because without any growth stuff, these potatoes don't grow terribly fast. Yeah, I know. Um, nothing comes to mind at the moment. I mean, we'll go for Thomcraft uh, before too long. Either Thomcraft, Botania, Blood Magic, Astrosaur, you know, all the magic mods have plant growth acceleration. So we'll go with one of those, I think, for accelerating our crop growth. Um, but that's going to give us power to use with our machines, with our various uh, IC2 machines. So this one's straight up backed up. This one, oh, it is making it is making lava. It's just it's being used. So yeah, that should be good. Now the only thing I have not done is I haven't pumped out the fertilizer from this, um, and we can do that really quick. We didn't have it pumping out of the last one either, but I think on these I would like to pump it out somewhere um, because, it, because it is going to start building up in these machines, especially with it chunk loaded now and it running uh, to be our first power system, and it'll run pretty much throughout the rest of the pack. We should get this uh, moving these items somewhere. So what I'm thinking is... Um, well, let's go ahead and run the basic item cables that we're going to need. Which is going to be will be these four here and these here. Now, of course, IC2 does have its own crop system, um, but I think to run a system this large, it's not really. But I mean, I guess we could do crop growth and have like really fast speed potatoes. Could work, but I think just on a large scale like this. Yeah, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let me um. I guess that would make more sense if it's more IC2 based. Uh, but there's our conduits ran across. As far as where I want to send the fertilizer, let's see. Yeah, we're going to try uh, this. And I want to see. I don't know, to be honest. I don't think it'll work with fertile soil. Uh, but if we end up, if we need to tear most of the system down, that's okay. Um, if need be. Because in truth, um, It'll get used, you know, over in the agriculture area pretty quick, so it's not really a big deal. Um, let me go ahead and make... Uh, we'll go ahead and do a stack of crop sticks. And we'll, we'll hold on to this fertilizer for just a minute till we do this. And then let me get um, some potatoes. It's been, it's actually been a, whoops, it's been a, a quite a while since the last time that we covered um, IC2 crops on camera too, so this will be kind of fun to do. It's been a little while. Um, I don't even have a hoe on me, but I do want to try the fertile soil and see if this works. No, it's not going to work with fertile soil. We do have to make a Maddock because we don't have one. And, of course, this pack is one of those that's like, no, you can't use anything except TC stuff. So, one of those things always drives me insane in packs. Okay, so, oh, I can't do it on Silty Dirt, looks like. About here. There we go. So, we can place these out. And we could do our crops. Now, one thing I do want to test is in this version of IC2, they can be trampled. Okay. Just checking. All right, so we're going to let that grow for a minute. And I need to get 
a crop analyzer. This right here, uh, this isn't too bad. All right, so there's our crop analyzer. And we're gonna need a way, and then what we can do is we can take and just drop this into the MFSU and it's going to charge this up for us. So we'll let that get charged up and then should probably move this breeding area over. Yeah, because right now it's not gonna be getting, uh, it's not gonna have light, so let's do that. And I guess realistically, yeah, because stuff's going to get trampled here if I leave it. I mean, I was planning on getting the IC2 crops anyways um, for like rubber and stuff like that. But uh, I think going ahead and jumping onto it for this would be a worthwhile investment for us. So, um, we'll just place it out over here for now. And place that there to hold the water so water is going to go down right here we're going to go ahead and just put you know a couple torches here to keep it lit and then we will come through with that and this works a lot like agricraft's crop system so what we'll do is we'll put it we're going to do like this and then we're going to do basically corner plots breeding the potatoes and then the middle plot breeding the potatoes as well um, and I'm gonna go ahead and break these crop sticks for now now we do have to wait until these are fully grown before we go to harvest off of them um, so we'll just give this a little bit to grow um, it's not gonna hurt that's one thing it's not gonna hurt having the system I mean we could always leave this system still plugged up um, we could disassemble it as well, but if nothing else, it gives us potatoes coming in now. Because it's going to take a little while for our IC2 crops to uh, to get to where we want them. They're a lot more work than um, Agricraft's crops, for sure. Um, so we're just going to give these a little while to grow while we push on with other things, and then we'll come back at various points and check on these. And you can see right here, I believe this is last stage crops. Um, and you can see right here, if we take a look, um, this is crop size three or four, which technically, um, well, if you look at the nutrient storage, the water storage, it's not great. We're gonna deal with that later. I'm not too worried about it right this second. Um, but the growth points are steadily going up on this. Right now, we can harvest this for potatoes. Like if I was to right click that, uh, well, I didn't get any potatoes that time, but uh, that would harvest it and give me potatoes. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this go up to the fourth stage. That will make poisonous potatoes, but it will also allow us to crossbreed um, these plants. Um, because the way potatoes work is if you harvest them at three, they will give you standard potatoes and at four, and they will give you poisonous potatoes. But that's not a problem. If we're using the crop matron to harvest, um, it'll be able to handle that. So that's not a big deal. Um, I'm not sure if the harvester can harvest off of these, but I really, I think poisonous potato, or uh, going with a crop matron will probably be best for us anyways. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a crop matron, and that way it harvests the potatoes when they're ready. And actually, I think it would be better to go with that anyways than going with the um, with the harvester, I do believe. So, right now it's not displaying stats. That's because we haven't scanned these, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and pull this up. And where we left off, we've got the bulk of the main machines, um, like the starting machines, available. Um, we do need to go ahead and get a block cutting machine uh, knocked out real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and get another half stack of aluminum plates made up real quick, because we are going to need these. And realistically, I mean, it's going to take us a long time, um, quite a bit of time, to get our crops completely done. We can speed that up. Um, I mean, right now, I think, let's see, 
the oxygen quality in here is probably not great. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, it could probably be better if there wasn't a block above them. Um, I know if there's blocks above them, they suffer from air quality issues. Also, blocks being next to them. I know that the crop that grows right here is going to be a bit slower, uh, but this is just for breeding purposes. So we'll make our actual growth area a little bit better than this, a little bit more suitable for our crops. But we'll get more into that later. Just know that nutrients, water, um, I mean, we can take and we can place out our fertilizer and like it'll speed this crop up a bit. Um, but we're gonna have a crop matron that handles all that. So for right now, I'm gonna let the fertilizer just build up and um, and then we'll handle that a little bit later. So I think we'll have plenty of fertilizer coming in that we can run it to make our crops a bit faster or at least use what, what is coming in, but it's not required. Same with hydration cells, they're not required, so. All right, we're gonna have to get one of these, which is 10 casings, iron, and then our copper cables. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and roll this out. There is our electric motor. There is our block cutter. And there's a quest complete. And let's just set this up. Right here. And I'm going to have to get a saw blade. Um, oh, but it's not called saw blade, is it? It's, um... Uh, cutting blade. Um, so we're going to go with this one right here that takes the diamond. It's got a lot more durability. It's just going to be better for us. But um, if if materials are an issue, there are cheaper versions of those uh, just with lesser durability. And you also have to bear in mind the strength of them uh, because the iron one, for example, is not going to be able to cut as much as the diamond is. Um, so the diamond has 13 pages that it can cut. There's only five pages that the iron can cut, for example. Um, but we can use this to make planks. We can use this to make uh, plates a whole lot easier by taking just a block of a material and cutting it down. Um, like doing obsidian, it's more efficient to make... Um... Oh, let's see. Right here we can make four obsidian plates Whereas if we did the compressor method, oh, they actually made it so that uh, you just get four plates. It used to be nine uh, doing it through the block cutter on here. So, um, but let's go ahead and let me grab these. I actually think, um, I think it would only require two for the block cutter, but I'm gonna go ahead and put three just to be on the safe side. And then we'll go ahead and plug that up. So that's got power and we can start using that if we need it. And for our reward, we get a loot chest from that, and we got paper walls. Okay, now it looks like these have become poisonous potatoes now. So what we're going to do, um, we're gonna go, that's the wrong thing. We're gonna grab our crop sticks and we're gonna make breeding pears like that just like with agricraft you know um, and it's going to try and crossbreed and make some better stats now there is a chance with this that we could get new crops the way crop breeding um, to make new crops works within iso2 is a little bit different than within agricraft because agricraft has very specific guidelines ic2 does not um, it works more it does have guidelines but we'll talk more a bit about We'll talk more about that a bit later. Um, basically, each crop will have a stat, which whenever we scan our first crops, we'll be able to see those. So potato, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it might be like yellow, um, I don't know, earthy, something, blah, blah, blah. It's going to have these basically descriptors. And depending on those descriptors, that's going to 
um, decide what it can crossbreed. And also to break these to get seed bags, we need to make, wait until they fully grow and then break them and not break them in these early, st uh, early stages. Otherwise, we're just going to get um, a cleared out crop stick. You know, it has to fully grow. So we'll let that crossbreed. We're going to keep an eye on these two, make sure we th that we don't get weeds um, on those two once they crossbreed. And then hopefully one of these will have better stats. I probably need to make a weeding trowel also. Let's go ahead and do that. But you'll still have, as far as stats go, you're still going to have the um, the default three, like what Agricraft has. Just bear in mind, IC2 crop breeding has been around a whole lot longer than IC2 or Agricraft's has been. Um, this is kind of where Agricraft got its idea from. Um, but you're still going to have the three main stats. You're going to have speed, growth, and resistance. Um, they are not capped at 10. They're capped at, I think it's, the hard cap is like 31, but you really don't want to go too high on any of them. Um, like growth, I would suggest going about 19, 20, 21, something around in there. If you go too high, it's actually going to be detrimental. It's going to cause uh, weeds and stuff to grow um, around it really, really fast. So things work a little bit differently, um, but it's still basically the same general premise uh, to bear in mind. Also, whenever weeds grow, you'll know it because it doesn't destroy your crop sticks, but you will see little green bits growing. Um, and that's what the weeding trial is going to be for. So that way we don't have to break the crop sticks. Um, we can instead just weed them out and uh, and get those out of the way. So Because we don't want weed spreading. Okay, so a couple of these are done. I've got a couple more cross breeding back here. But if we were to break this one, and I'm going to go ahead and break these crop sticks off so we don't have a chance of getting uh, weeds. And you can see we did get a couple seed packets. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scan these. We know that it's potato now. You can see it's tier two, discovered by the IC2 team, um, which is who made it, you know. Um, and here's what I was talking about before. This is the um, kind of the characteristics of these seeds. They're yellow, food, and potato. And so whenever it comes to breeding, um, we'll talk more about that whenever we actually start getting into crossbreeding and making new plants. Um, but we're going to be looking at this for um, crossbreeding, especially. And you can see the stats on this are 2 2 2. Then, let's check this other one. You can see it does take a few scans to see what everything is. This one is 1 0 3. All right. And each, each stat will have uh, positives and negatives. Growth, of course, increases the growth speed, but also increases the speed in which weeds around it grow. Um, gain, I can't remember off the top of my head the negative effect from gain. I think it decreases crop speed growth, if I recall, um, overall. Um, but having a high growth and gain stat is still a good thing to do. Um, but of course, having more of it's gonna increase the amount that you get per harvest. And then resistance, increases the resistance that it has towards weeds but it also decreases the speed that it will crossbreed so uh, just bear that in mind um, so ideally we're going for really high growth and gain is what i'd really like and a decent resistance score without being too high honestly like a six or seven on resistance i'd be fine with that so i'm not going to crossbreed these right this second i'm going to go ahead and do um, you know, a few more rotations. I haven't bothered putting any here because it just, with the blocks next to it, it makes it so slow um, that I'm just not even going to bother. I'll just do it over here, I think, and probably end up shifting this out when it comes time to get really serious about increasing the stats. Um, but for right now, we're just going to be increasing the stats. So whenever we place our new crops, of course, we'll just place them around uh, just like we do with Agricraft, just like we did here with the one. These are going to be one one ones. Uh, for the record so but I'll go ahead and let that start spreading um, I'll keep an eye on it and weed it if needed we haven't had really much in the way of weeds so far um, but there is there is a weed chance so just bear that in mind hopefully we'll come across it this episode so anyway moving on I think next up we should go ahead and knock out the blast furnace this is really just for getting the quest done um, we are gonna have to get an electric heat generator Okay, so there's our battery, and there is our heat conductor, and there's our iron casings. 
we'll go ahead and get this. I don't have a ton of use for this, to be honest, but at least that's done. Um, we'll probably use it later on when we get into RTGs, but we just don't have a much need for it um, because it's very inefficient to make um, heat with electric heat generators, whereas lava is a little bit more effective, uh, in all honesty. And then we're going to have to get a blast furnace for this quest. But I'd like to get, we'll start moving towards automated hydration cells pretty quickly. So then we'll have hydration cells and fertilizer uh, basically automated because fertilizer is going to be coming as a byproduct. Oh, we actually crossbred and got a new crop, it looks like. Um, looks like melon, pumpkins. We got pumpkins. So, all right. Well, I don't care anything about having pumpkins. So I'm going to go ahead and break that off and try to rebreed again. But like I said, you can get, um, you know, other crops. It's just potatoes that we're crossbreeding, but we can still get other things from that. Okay, so we got ourselves a loot chest. And we've already done this quest before, so there's another loot chest from that. And then they want us to get Induction Furnace and Recycler. Recycler kind of starts our pathway to the really, the most useful things in IC2, which is going to be getting the Iridium, though these machines in here are going to be extremely useful because they will be faster uh, than any other options uh, within the pack. So uh, there's potatoes. Great. All right, so what did we get? We got a resonating gem, four of them, and we got lime anti-blocks. Don't have a ton of use for the anti-blocks, but we might for a build or something at some point. And we'll, we'll get these facaded uh, before too long. Once we start getting into foam, um, we'll be automating that um, in due time. And the blast furnace, I'm just going to put away. I've set these up before in past series. I'm not going to on here because we're already making steel um, in different ways. So there's we don't really need that. That's just really, if you're starting with IC2, that's how you're going to make steel is with the blast furnace and applying heat, just like we did with the... Um, the fermenters over here. So, so then we could go ahead and get the induction furnace. Um, honestly, I don't think we're going to be using this one. Um, it, it's basically the way IC2 machines work is like, for example, the electric furnace. This is your tier one machine, as it is. Induction furnace is your tier two. It's a bit faster. It can be extremely fast. But then a heavily sped up electric furnace is your tier three. It pretty much smelts instantly um, and is a super powerhouse but also has a very high power cost uh, to go along with that so but I think at the moment I would like to go ahead and just get a couple of these quests knocked out um, that we've got sitting around like for example moving up to the better power storage or the power storage quests and power cables I'd like to go ahead and knock these out to be perfectly honest uh, just to get them out of the way. So I need redstone. I'm going to need some more tin plates as well. And it looks like this one is fully grown now. So we'll go ahead and just break that one off. Um, these crops will take a while before we get them. Oh, we actually got two crop seed bags. Now chances are these will probably be the same thing. And if you have two, you can do this for faster. That's for the record. Yeah, so we got 330 on both of these. And I actually really like the stats on those, uh, to be perfectly honest, because it's focusing on the stuff that I really, really want, which is growth and gain. The 222 is also not too bad. This one I'm not terribly interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and just trash this um, because I don't really like that one. So. All right, now I do need some wood. Um, I'm just going to steal some wood from here because all this is going to be getting removed uh, in due time. It's actually something I'm hoping to start in on between this episode and next is, I mean, I got this room all built out, which I'm pretty happy with the design, and then we'll carry this through, of course, for the whole tower. Um, that's usually what takes so long is figuring out a design and color palette for uh, the building, which is mainly cathedral mod. Um, but of course I like I love the cathedral mod so that's okay there we go about box of 10 cables and we get a loot chest from that uh, next up is LV power I think most of these quests after this one I think these two will be done in that one so for this we're gonna need 
bronze plates, copper cables, and advanced RE batteries, which takes sulfur, lead, copper cables. Um, so I'm going to need a total of 15 bronze. Uh, in our loot chest, we got a smart output from Tinker.io. But I'm going to go ahead and get the bronze running. I can never remember what this is called, the CESU, because I tend to always like skip it, you know, and go straight to the higher tiers because they're really not that expensive um, when it's fairly default recipes. But, and in the case of this pack, it is fairly default recipes. Um, when it comes to making a lot of the IC2 stuff, so. Alright, so there's more potatoes. This one is done, so I'm going to go ahead and just snap that off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break these at this point because I don't think we need to breed more. I think I'm going to have at least four of, you know, four crops that I want to use for the next breeding cycle. I think I'm going to have them from this. So one, two, three. I'm not crazy about that one. But I'll go ahead and hold on to it for now. I really like those. And I will say with the IC2 uh, crops, it's not realistic to shoot for maximum uh, stuff. Because chances are you're not going to get max stats. You're going to be lucky to see even one stat max. And then the negative is going to be so bad um, from it that you're going to suffer because of that. Oh, I got another... This will be probably the same set of seeds as what we just got. I'll wait to scan it until our crop analyzers charge back up. So um, We're going to have to start making a bunch of overclockers soon. Um, the ones I've got are just from the Quest. They're not that expensive, um, but it was really just waiting until we had the power to supply it. And I don't have coolant being produced at the moment, so we're going to have to start on that pretty soon. Okay, so there's all three of those and then we'll just place them out we got our bronze plates and our copper cable there we go so that quest is done and then next up we do have to get some gold cable that's fine what did we get as our reward a green balloon from mechanism 16 of them so let me go ahead and get some of this being made. This will make a little bit more than what we need, but that's okay. Because we'll need it for, um, we will need it for crafting various things uh, before too long. Oh. Apparently non-sheathed um, cable works, so that's good. And then we need iron cables. And we got a scanner from Scannable. And that completes a quest. Awesome. Um, I'm glad we never bothered making it, I suppose. And that gives us another loot chest here. Then they want us to get rare ores. We've already found most of these, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn that in. Um, iridium, rutile, all clatherite, star metal, draconium, and diluthium. Um, we found all those already, so. We'll have to finish the rest of the gates. It's pretty much just this one that kind of slows you down. Osco glass um, requires that we get into mechanism. Um, and then these will be later, or this one will be late uh, uh, mystical agriculture. But there's our iron cable. There we go. That completes that. We get a loot chest. And where did it toss? Oh, it's right here. Uh, let's go ahead. We got poutines. Eight of those. And then we got angel blocks. Sixteen of those. Okay. And then this quest here for EV uh, glass cable. There's our loot chest from that. Light blue stained glass. I tend to like just going straight for um, glass fiber cables. Because they're not that expensive, they do require some diamonds and redstone and some silver, but, uh, you know, they're not expensive at all. And this way, everything's pretty much where it needs to be for infinite scaling. I mean, this is the best cable we're going to be making, um, so there's really no reason to ever feel like we need to upgrade at this point. So, with default recipes on the IC2 stuff, it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to go with anything else. Okay, so this one is bred up. 
So what did we get? Go ahead and scan both of these. Ooh, zero, zero, 002, that's not even. No, I think I don't want that one. No chance at all that I'll want that one. I've got two more chances here. Right now, I've got three that I really like, two that I'm meh about. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully it'll turn out in our favor. I love once we have flight because we like never have to eat food. Like ever. And you can see our biomass is steadily building up at this point. I think with the, the farms going... Oh, uh, we made grin powder. That's because we got poisonous potatoes. I'm going to need to deal with those. Um, I didn't even think about that. Grin powder is made whenever you uh, macerate... Um, poisonous potatoes which is not a bad thing because we can use it to make weed axe but I don't know if I really want to make much in the way of weed axe so um, as far as how we are going to deal with our poison potatoes I mean one option is just um, because grid powder can't go into the canners so whenever it extracts from from here I could just put a drawer in and we could still get the grin powder and build it up because we might use it later on so that's not necessarily a bad idea so maybe if I just make a drawer that sits up here and collects the grin powder um, so this will be entirely macerating all the potatoes coming from this farm uh, that's not a bad idea but where will I put I can put it here. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go with this design, I think. Alright, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double slot grin powder because um, I really don't have anything else that I need ran through there, I don't guess. So, yeah, we'll just put this right there. And we'll go ahead and slot in our grin powder, lock that in, and then, uh, and we're going to say that you can insert here. Um, and we may add an extract to that later if we end up making weed X, though I doubt that we will. Um, but in the event that we do, we can always extract from that, so. Um, and you might be able to get seeds from potatoes at third stage. I just can't recall if you can, and I'd rather not. They take so long to grow with this, like at 111, that I'd rather just not do that, to be perfectly honest. I'd rather not chance it, so there we go. I do kind of like this room. It's clean, and I think it matches our overall base style. And then if we end up adding crop matrons down here... I may still leave this setup and then have crop matron setups as well. I don't know. More potatoes the better, I guess. Um, right now it's going to be slowed down because of this, but we can speed this up later. You know, that's not an issue for us. I'm not speeding up at the moment because there's really no reason to. Oh, you know what? I could put fertilizer here. So... Let me just do that instead because I need a place to store fertilizer um, regardless. So, yeah. And I don't think, well, actually, I know for a fact fertilizer can't go into anything over here that we want to keep out of it. So, there we go. I'll just do that. And then these can pull out their fertilizer, dump it into this system, and we'll be storing fertilizer up in here. Now it will inevitably that build back up, but what I'll probably do is just put a void upgrade in here because we can void fertilizer and we can void grain powder. If it goes over 208 stacks, which is honestly it's going to take a really long time because you don't get a ton of poisonous potatoes. Crop matrons won't produce any poisonous potatoes and... 
fertilizer, I mean, it doesn't produce very fast either, so. But that takes care of that for at least, you know, for now, so. And, yeah. I think that will be good. Now, there is the electric jetpack. That takes an elytra, advanced control circuit, steel casings. I think I've got some elytras lying around. Um, just so we can knock this quest out. I have no need for it, of course. Um, chances are, if I had an elytra, I'd be back here. I've got this one. I don't know if I can use a damaged one, but if not, I can easily repair that. So it's not a big deal. So there's that. And then... Yeah, it's not registering that elytra. So I'm going to have to just repair it up, which is fine. What in the world? Sounds like I have a dragon near here, but... Okay, we might go dragon hunting real quick. Alright, I wasn't able to find the dragon, but next episode we might go dragon hunting, perhaps. Um, I wonder why... Oh, I need a regular elytra, not the bobble, is the thing. But yeah, next episode we might go dragon hunting. I know we're getting close to the end of this episode, but I think that sounds promising. And I need to get that dragon gone before it starts ripping up farmland. I didn't realize it was down there. Alright, so there's our IC2 jetpack. Quest completed, and we will take our loot chest from that. And we got blocks of coal coke. Four of those. Okay. Um, and these are done. And I did look up um, gain, the negative effect on gain, it decreases the chance for seed bags. Um, and resistance will increase the chance of getting multiple seed bags. Um, so they kind of um, so just be aware of that. But alright. There we go. And we got 033, 033, and 022. Okay. So I'll probably go with like a 123 and then these, I think. Or maybe a 033 and these. Now I'll probably go with a 123 and then these, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to toss these other ones. And then what we'll do to change over our farm at this point. And for the record, um, if we take a look at these, we those should be 111s, I imagine. Yeah. So all these are just going to be 111s. Because um, these are just default potatoes, basically. All right. And I guess we got kind of lucky. We haven't really had much in the way of weeds today. We're steadily making progress. Now, as far as the quests go, um, I think most of the rest of this stuff is going to be actual progression at this point. I mean, ore washing plant, we could go ahead and knock out one of these. Um, just really, really quick because it's not something that... I don't think our ore processing, we're going to be going through IC2 for that. We've done IC2 before, um, and I don't think we're going to be doing our ore processing that way. So we might as well go ahead and make one of these. Actually, made iron casings. Whoops. That's fine. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and get all these miscellaneous quests that aren't really of much use for us and what we're planning on doing. Okay, so there's our ore washing plant. And quest complete. There's our loot chest. Okay, so yeah, I think all the rest of this is going to be progression-based things that we're going to be working through. And we got Plowman's Lunches, eight of those. It's awesome. And we can pretty much, Mining Laser will basically be for the Thermal Center Fusion stuff. Um, I don't know that we'll really use it for the tools, but we will be making it for 
uh, both of these, which we'll be making a fair few of. So, yeah. So then next episode, we might go dragon hunting, and then after that or whatever, we'll start into uh, getting into all this. I'd like to start getting a nuclear reactor set up here soon. So, so that way we can start making plutonium and iridium and getting our RTG fuels. And yeah, then it gets really, really exciting um, because once we get our RTG pellets, well, we can start making the void. Well, that's for the tier six. Um, we're not really going to be using them for crafting, but we're going to be making the... Um, we actually used a lot of these the last time through, but making the nuclear, um, and we can make RT heat generators as well with the RTGs now. Um, but we're going to be making the, the name escapes me for whatever reason, the RT generators. So we'll be making RT generators and RT heat generators for power and heat production. Um, so then at that point we can really cut out the lava, though I'll probably leave it for this system. Uh, but then at that point we might change all of our steel uh, generation over to IC2 and be generating the heat with RTGs. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how things go. But, um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. We will do a bit more with IC2 crops in the coming episodes. This was just kind of getting started and getting potatoes, the stats going up on them. Um, at present, with our current stats, it's not going to be faster than our big farm. But before too long, once we get our crop matrons and get decent stats, it will be extremely fast potato production, boosting our overall semi-fluid uh, generator system from that. But at the moment, we're coming out positive, which is good, and we have the power to run our machines to expand on. IC2 is all about expanding. You don't make just a couple machines. Like with thermal, you tend to be fine with just a few dynamos and a few of each machine. Whereas IC2, you kind of want a lot of many, many things usually. Even nuclear reactors, you tend to want a fair few of them uh, for larger systems. So, But anyways, we'll continue on in the next episode. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.